All right, so in the last video, we ended up with something like this, right? And the idea is that we want this sort of dramatic effect right about here to start fading up because that's about the top of the, the section. And if we were to check it out, we can inspect this element and see that, in fact, this div, uh, excuse me, let's go back here, that the footer um, is, you know, 100 um, VH, right? And so you can see the footer, if I highlight it in the inspector, as it starts to come up, you can kind of see it that it moves a little bit more. And the other thing, too, is that the uh, name Elizabeth Hobbs comes out from behind the hills, but I like the idea of it coming out on top of the hill. So we need to change the z-index because, if you remember, the footer itself is relative, so that means it can accept a z-index, right? So let's go ahead here and we're going to say z-index, first things first, and we'll say f like 400 because if you remember up here the highest one we've got so far is 300 for the for the road, so we want to go above that. So let's just test that really quick and make sure that that in fact it does see now it does go over the road which is great but the effect is kind of weird because it's kind of hard to read that text right so let's do something where we have either a gradient background image or the other thing you can do is that there are these generators that you can use I'm just gonna pull one up really quickly um, there are a whole bunch of different ones but if you just type in Google search um, CSS gradient generator, you're probably going to get this one as the first hit. So I'm just going to actually refresh the page. This is kind of what you would see. It might start off like that, right? I'm going to choose this uh, black to transparency right here. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to reverse it because I don't want it to start black and get paler. I want it to start pale and get black. So if I hit this little reverse button, it reverses it for me. Also, I want to pick this dark color and make sure that it's pure black and this is the level of transparency up here in this little slider and I want to make sure that its opacity is set to be a hundred percent because I want it to get fully dark um, at the, the very bottom okay so now that I've got that done the other thing that I can do is tell it it really only needs to be like about one wide and then I want to tell it to be about 2000 tall and that will really accommodate most different screen sizes for the effect that I'm looking for. And then what's cool is it generates all this CSS code. You don't have to actually have a background image. I'm going to copy it with a little copy link. And then if I come over here in my uh, footer and I just paste, you see it pastes all this stuff in there for me. And if I want to be really uh, good and clean my code up here I can just tab it right in and it has all these vendor prefixes like Mozilla WebKit and all that save that and let's do a new test let's get that out of the way hit refresh and in fact it is working alright so that's good and you can kinda see it come up a little bit so if you want it to be more subtle than that you can adjust it but we'll we'll stick with that for right now now this purple isn't going to work out so well. The purple is pretty dark. Um, so the other thing that I would want to go do is uh, make a new rule for the the H2 anchor link. So we'll say footer <clears throat> and then H2A because you have to style, if you remember correctly from the other assignments, you have to style anchor tags separately when it comes to text color. So we're going to say color all right, and then we're going to give it, um, let's do a color of FFF, which is white. You could color it anything you wanted, but let's just say white. And then we're also going to tell it not to have a text decoration. Um, those are pretty awful. Uh, so we'll say text decoration, none. Save that. Do a new test. Make sure it looks the way we expect it to, and in fact, it looks right. Okay, so that's a good starting place. Now, there is a pretty big gulf in between here so I might want to just increase the or I want might want to decrease the margin so that it doesn't take quite so much time for us to get you know from here let's close this up so it doesn't take me quite so long to to get from here to here because some users might get here and think oh well, that's the end of the page right so we might want to start this up a little bit higher and one of the things that we could uh, do then is we could either try um, putting 
a negative um, top margin or a negative, uh, yeah, m top margin on the footer. Or the other thing that we could try is, let's just see what happens if we go up here to stanzas and uh, we reduce the height. So let's try maybe, I don't know, like see what happens if we do it at 80 viewport height and see if that makes a difference in uh, how long it takes us to get from point A to point B. So let's hit refresh. And then you see that it does start fading up a little bit sooner, which is great. Now, the other thing too that needs to happen is that we need to change our typography uh, so that it looks better than this, right? And so there are a lot of things that we wanted to do. If you look at the original, we need to increase the type size. We need, we'd like to do a drop cap. You also might notice that there's some subtle drop shadows back here. The other thing that's happening too is that as we scroll up, you see how this is sort of like fading in? Well, that is a really cool CSS3 trick that is uh, using a mixed blend mode. So if you've ever done anything in Photoshop with blend modes, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you don't, a blend mode is where you take the color of one thing that's on the top and you give it a certain kind of blend mode so that it interacts with the thing that's on the bottom and it can come out with some pretty cool effects. All right, and so uh, this is what we've got and we can have it so that it's actually orange if we want and then it can be a hover effect of white. So however you want to do this, but this is what we're going to get started on for our next lessons. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> jump back over here and let's let's actually do some of this in the inspector since we can see it happening live. Um, let's try doing this where I'm going to right click on um, the stanza, right? And I'm going to, I'm going to try to inspect some stuff. And with this, because of the weird view, uh, viewport height measurements, we might have to uh, look around in the code over here. We can't just expect it to find the right thing. So let's look at the stanzas for a minute and we've got the ID of one, two, and three. Um, let's say that three is exactly where we want it. So it's, it's in line with the leftmost edge of its container. Let's say that the two, this two stanza, if we select that, let's, let's create a rule for it and tell it maybe to have a, a padding left of, I don't know, let's say 25% perhaps. And then it pops it over 25%. And, and that seems like it might be kind of a nice, uh, a nice a distance over. So then if that's the case, let's select number one and let's create a rule for it. And let's say padding left so we can see it live. Let's say, I don't know, somewhere around maybe 40%. It could even potentially be more depending on how we think that looks. Um, and so that's not too bad. And then you can kind of hover over it and see how it's behaving, right? And then if you wanted to, you know, look at the section stanzas, one of the things that we didn't give it um, that we, you know, might want to give it, we could say uh, box sizing, right? and then say border box. And the reason that we might want to do that is just as we're adding padding and doing other kinds of weird stuff, we don't want it to oversize itself. Remember box sizing will include uh, um, the padding up to the border and whatever width you tell it to be, it'll actually be that width without adding additional stuff. Um, so, you know, we might even want to push over stanza one a little bit more. Uh, let's see if, uh, maybe making it 50%. That looks like visually it looks a little too much, even though mathematically it might be right. We could see what 45% does. You know, 45 is even okay, but I don't know. There's something about it that it seems a little bit nicer that it just sort of mildly cascades down. So we'll maybe try something like 42%. See how that works. Um, and so remember that we're working in this inspector style sheet, okay? Because we're adding some new rules. Um, the other thing is, let's just go ahead actually, and let's create some of those. Um, we can also decide on a color. So let's just, for right now, let's just give something a color. Let's say um, it's color is FFF. And the reason I'm just choosing that randomly, if I go back to elements here, is because now if that 
has a color, I can actually click it and I can intentionally choose whatever color I want, right? So um, let's try that. So if I click on that, um, we can also choose, don't forget that you can go like to a specific hex number, um, but we can kind of mess around with the areas um, until we get a kind of a color that we're comfortable with. I happen to know the color that I'd like to use and it's that that color right there. So I'm going to leave that uh, as such a color. And then if I were to copy this, now I could go to uh, stanza one and I could add that as a color. And then I could kind of go off of it and tell it maybe to be uh, maybe a lighter color. So from there, you know, I could maybe have it start a little bit lighter than it was uh, on the previous one, right? And then uh, because it's a little lighter, I can make it go a little bit darker on the third stanza. And I don't have a rule for it yet, so I'll click that little plus symbol while I have it selected and I'll tell it to have a color. And we'll put that in there. And then I can click it to make it a little bit darker. And that's kind of a nice, uh, somewhere in there, that's kind of a nice transition uh, of, of like a gradient, okay? And so now I've got some basic colors set up. Um, and the other thing that I can do too, that's kind of cool, if you want to look at this, um, if we go up here to, to uh, stanzas, we can also try to add what's referred to as a, um, here, let's open this up a little bit. Uh, it's referred to as a mix dash blend mode. And we could try something like difference um, and see how that looks as it's scrolling up. And it, it, it's the way that it interacts with the foreground or the, the, the foreground and the interacts with the background. So difference doesn't seem to be the right one. It doesn't really seem to, to do it. So maybe we should try something different. So I think I'm going to try um, overlay. And that seems to be kind of the nice one because it looks like it's sort of like very softly emerging from inside of the hills. And if you wanted to see a full list, I opened uh, up this page. And um, if you go to css-tricks.com and you look up mix blend mode, uh, it's like the first hit comes up. It's the almanac hit. And it has all these different values that you can put for blend mode. You can try all sorts of different stuff. And depending on what the color of your text is, it can do some really interesting things. Um, OK. so. I think we've decided that that's kind of cool, right? Uh, so um, we could do something like that. The only thing, though, is it's kind of hard to read until you get up here on the darker area. So what we also might want to do is put a drop shadow that's really fuzzy and blurry behind this so it's easier to read. Um, so before I, I guess I do that, I should go ahead and um, before I get too far, I need to probably record what I've done so far. So um, I'm going to go and jump over here to sources. I'm going to copy all of the, the uh, rules that I just made. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to put them into my actual source code. So if I come over here um, under section stanzas, I might want to go ahead and make this kind of setup here. And then the other thing that I did too is that I actually changed something on an existing style where it says section stanzas, I added this mix blend mode. So I'm going to copy this whole rule and I'm going to jump back over and I'm going to add it on my existing section stanzas rule right here. Okay, and we'll save that. And if we go to update the file, let's take a look, let's refresh the page. And it does in fact still look the same as we had it before. So that's good, it's, it's scaling properly.